Gossens are pretty popular with exploration geologists because they often represent the weathering products of rocks with lots of sulphide in them. And any rock with lots of sulphide has a good chance of containing copper, lead, zinc or several other metals. The trouble is, there's quite a few rocks that closely mimic the products of weathering sulphides. They're the fake Gossens and they can be a lot more common than the real ones. If you want to understand the difference between the real ones and the fake ones, then this is the video for you. I'm Nick Tate, and this is another video in the series of Fieldcraft for Geologists. This is the headline version for YouTube. If you want the detail on each video, go to the link below in the description. It'll only cost you a few bucks, and once you're signed up, you'll get all the videos that are already there, plus anything new that I shoot as I find interesting things in the field. So how do we tell the difference between the good Gossens after sulphide and the not so good ones after other things? Number one, texture. Spongy is good. Lots and lots of holes is what you want to see. If the thing looks like a dark brown kitchen sponge, that's the good stuff. Things with not so many holes and lots of massive girthite in between the holes, mm, they're usually not so good. Number two, the shape of the holes. If you can see lots of nice cubic cavities, then there's a good chance that that's after pyrite. Pyrite's one of the very few minerals that forms perfect cubes, and it's about the only one that's got lots of iron in it that forms perfect cubes. So if you've got a nice spongy rock, and it's got lots of nice cubic cavities in it, then there's a really good chance that that's a gossen after sulphide, mostly pyrite. But anything with lots of pyrite in it, it's got a good chance of having lots of other sulphides as well, so you're on the right track. Chalcopyrite tends to form wavy edges on the cavities and they're no particular shape. Gossens after carbonate often have rhomb-shaped cavities and internal walls inside the cavities are often made of paper-thin walls of silica that have precipitated on the cleavage planes of the carbonate. Gossens after garnet tend to be massive. They're almost solid, not quite. You can just see tiny, tiny little holes, but the clue is on the outside surface. You'll see dodecahedron shapes anywhere there was a free surface for the garnet to grow against. Now, sometimes, the shapes of the holes in a gossen, or the secondary minerals in those holes, can give you an idea about what the sulphides were that were in there before it got weathered. It's not an exact science, but it can give you a good start. If you want to give that a try, I thoroughly recommend a book by Roger Taylor. It's called Gossens and Leach Cappings Field Assessment. And it's got beautiful pictures of all the different types of textures and secondary minerals that you're likely to find in Gossens, particularly those ones after sulphide. It's a really good book to have on hand, particularly when you come across a Gossen with textures or minerals that you've never seen before. Number three, quartz. Almost all Gossens with lots of sulphide included some quartz in the original matrix of the rock. If there's a little bit of quartz in between all the holes, that's a good thing. If there's no quartz at all, that's generally a bad thing. Number four, colour. Things that are light brown like this or mustard coloured are often after carbonate. Things that are dark brown or black are much more likely to be after sulphide. There's a few exceptions to that rule, but generally speaking, light is not so good dark is good. Number five, secondary minerals. If the cavities are filled with little fluffy crusty white bushes, that's often iron sulphide and that gives you a clue it might have been pyrite. If you can see malachite or azurite or some other secondary mineral after copper, lead and zinc, that's good. No secondary minerals or some powdery brown crap, not so good. Number six, Fresh sulphide. If you can find a bit of quartz with a bit of sulphide encased in it that's been protected from the groundwater, then that's a pretty good guide. No sulphides at all, not so good. 
Okay, here's a trap for young players. This one actually looks not too bad on the surface. Let's crack it open and have a look. Inside, it just looks like black cement. It's got lots of little quartz grains all glued together with what looks like gossan, but if you have a look at that, you'll see that there's lots of little quartz grains in there. There's no square holes, and those quartz grains are all isolated from each other, and they're just sand grains from the soil around here. This is actually part of an ant mound. Right here, we can see an example of exactly how that fake gossan formed. So let's go and take a closer look. This is a hollow log from an old tree that's fallen over and the termites have built a nest inside. And next time there's a bushfire, this log will burn and the heat from the fire will cook that nest and turn it into a gossan. That gossan will look like a real one because it'll be nice and dark, brown, black colour. It'll have lots of holes in it from where the termites have been boring. But it won't have any nice, neat square holes after pyrite and it won't have a quartz framework like most other gossans. It'll also have lots of little sand grains and pebbles from the soil around here. So you can pretty quickly recognise that that's going to be a fake one. In the detail video, we'll have a look at those internal textures in detail and a few of the other clues that'll help you steer away from the fake ones and focus on the good ones. At the end of the day, if all else fails, go with Rule 16. If it's brown, bag it.